We're going to try to do this. Okay. So, um, it's bright out here. So, well, you know what? Now I just got water all over my glasses because my hair is still wet. So, um, I decided to make a video talking about my latest journey in all of the things that I've been studying lately. Um, I did one a while ago talking about, oh, my, let's see, well, whatever, I'll do that later. It's really quite weird to me, all these little, like, things that it sends you while you're trying to do this, and it's like, hello, I'm, like, trying to make a video here, stop sending me notifications, whatever, okay. So, um, a while ago, I announced that I was going to, um, do a Qigong teacher training and a few of you know what that is and most of the people that I talk to about it are like what the heck is Qigong <laughs> which uh, pretty much anybody who studies it here in the West and especially you know kind of out here in the middle of nowhere like Utah um, most people don't know what it is so I thought I'd get on here and um, talk a little bit about what it is, why I love it, and why I've decided to study it, and also how I found it. Um, so I signed up for a Qigong teacher certification training, um, which should wrap up sometime in mid-January. Now what I do with this, I really don't know yet. Um, and, you know, the Capricornian part of me is like, if something doesn't have a utility, then why are you doing this? <laughs> Which is why I've sat on the fence about it forever. Um, I've actually really been um, called to Qigong for quite a while and wanting to share it with other people. And I have shared it with other people um, when I was teaching at UUCO and also out at North Ogden, the yoga studio out in North Ogden. Um, but I haven't like come out and said hey this is qigong and i want to just teach qigong until very recently um and the reason for that is uh my current position at, for work as a career is working with seniors and um recently when i had a meeting with um everybody in the aging staff it was brought up that they had brought someone on to do some work with our seniors in the um, the senior communities and um, it was rather difficult for a lot of the seniors and they were like we're not really sure if they're getting it and we need something that's a little easier for them and um, I just sort of blurted out well I could teach them Qigong <laughs> and so then that was my like moment of okay I better get certified so I can actually teach this but I discovered it probably back in, I think it was either 2011 or 2012. Um, I'm not really sure on those dates. And Tamara, if you happen to watch this later, and you remember when we started working together, then that would be lovely for you to get those dates correct. But I used to teach um, a vitality class at um, Eccles Community Art Center with Tamara Anderson, who is a Nia teacher. She has a background in Qigong. She has a background in yoga. She has a background in a bunch of different things. And I also was studying yoga, which I discovered like clear back in 96 uh, through the Hare Krishna temple. And um, I was doing a lot of stuff with dance, with Deja. And she asked me if I wouldn't mind co-teaching a class with her where we um, had a group of women and I taught them like the dance piece and she was teaching them some meditative uh, things and some journaling and then she was also adding in all of these strange movements that had sounds attached to them and it, you know each movement and sound correlates to an organ in the body and I had never heard of any of this before but I thought it was really cool and interesting and I latched onto it and it was Qigong. So, um, that was my first introduction to Qigong. Then I went off and I was dancing with Samba Fogo and, um, that's where I came across like a Risha movement and stuff like that. Did that for a while. 
Then we moved away to Oregon. Um, I still taught dance and some yoga there while I was there. Um, but I kept like incorporating little elements of Qigong into what I was teaching. Like without just coming right out and saying, hey, this is Qigong. <clears throat> but it wasn't like my focal point until after my son was born. Which, oh, he's over here. He's going to come say hi. Pop Hello. In. Hello. Say hi, son. <laughs> he, he likes to come out here and, and hang. Hang in the yard. It's awesome, huh? I like being in the yard, too. Yes, I kind of wish that we had a hammock, but... <laughs> so he wants a hammock is what he's doing. He's putting that out there to the universe. Okay, pal. You can mosey-dozy. <laughs> um, after my son was born, I was having some issues with my... This might be a little TMI, but I was having some issues with my pelvic floor. And someone was like, you know, you should try this Qigong stuff and sent me a video um, because it's really good for rebuilding your pelvic floor. And I was like, well, okay. So I tried it and fell absolutely head over heels in love with it. Um, my first introduction to Qigong after my son was born. Oh boy, somebody's decided to chainsaw right now. Oh, well, these are the things that happen when you go live outside. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um... I found Yochi, which is a combination of yoga and Qigong that was being taught by Marissa Cranfill, and I just loved it. And I started doing it every single day. This was probably back in, I'm thinking, 2015, because it was like right after Alexander was born. Um, let's see, I'm going to expand. There we go. That's way better. Um, so I started doing that, then through uh, Yo Yochi, I found Mimi Kodimer, who is also an amazing yoga and Qigong teacher. That was so annoying. I hope they stop doing that. Anyway, um, so I started practicing with her. Then I found Lee Holden, who is actually one of the first Westerners to bring Qigong from China to the United States, and then I also found Nick Lofrey, who is um, the teacher that I'm certifying with, who is one of Lee Holden's uh, students. So the reason that I picked Nick is not only is he very near where I live, but um, he is a student of Lee Holden, who is a student, student of Montauk Chia in China and comes from this long lineage of teachers. So he has a lot of really good information to impart. Um, he also does this thing with bioenergetic healing, um, which like couples really nicely in with a lot of the Ayurvedic stuff that I study and also like a lot of the work that I've been doing with pranic healing. So that's how I found it. And these are the people that I'm studying with. And, um, yeah, so that kind of brings us up to the present moment. So what is Qigong? Of course, they pick now to do this, but hopefully it will pass soon. Dang, neighbors, huh? I know. Shoot. So, Qigong is what that word qi means has to do with your life force energy. Um, in certain parts of China, it's spelled Q-I, and in other parts, it's C-H-I. Well, actually, they have characters there because they don't use um, the, the alphabet that we use. But when it gets translated over for English, some people use a Q, Q-I, and some people use C-H-I. But it's pronounced Qi, and it really just depends on what part of China um, this lineage is coming from, whether they spell it with a Q or a C-H. I use the ch the Q because that's what all of my teachers use, but it's pronounced Qi, and it means your life force energy, right? So when I was first coming across some of these concepts, I was like, ooh, the life force energy. Well, this is reminding me of like the force because, you know, I'm a big Star Wars nerd, and um, it is very much that idea. In fact, um, George Lucas got a lot of his ideas for um, the concept of the force when he was studying Taoism. Um, but chi is the animating life force energy that is in all things, okay? So when we're talking about chi, it's not just like its own entity. It is something that penetrates and moves through all things, including the person that's leaf blowing right now or whatever the heck they're doing. <laughs> 
But all things have chi. Like the sun has chi, the air has chi, the tree has chi, the dog has chi, I have chi, hair has chi. Um, and when people are talking about chi in China, like they will talk about things in terms of its chi. Um, and that just means like its energy. And so the gong part, which is also in like gong fu, um, it means to cultivate something. And so qigong literally means to cultivate your life force energy. Um, and it's all about finding balance, okay? So in the Chinese concept of things, um, which is going back a long, long time, we're talking like 5,000 years ago, we're talking predating Taoism, is this balance of all things. It, it has its roots in shamanism and when you're doing a lot of these movements, especially like the movements for um, the five animal frolics, or when you're doing stuff that has to do with the elements, like the five elements, you can immediately recognize how all of this stuff came out of studying nature. There are movements that are very water-like and flowing. There are movements that are very fierce and quick, like fire. Um, there are very grounding movements that have to do with earth. And then when you're doing a lot of these animal elements, like I especially love the crane uh, movements. I don't know why that one is like one of my favorite, but it you, you start doing these movements and you start doing all these visualizations and you're like, yeah, I feel like a bird <laughs> or a tiger or a dragon. And so you can see how long time ago, um, a lot of this came from studying nature and then embodying nature. So the shaman would embody being a tiger or a crane or a monkey or a snake. Okay. And then that's where a lot of these movements came from. Or when they wanted to commune with water, then they would embody a lot of these water element movements. Okay. This then uh, became like a system. And depending on who you talk to, some people will be like, yeah, Qigong is like 10,000 years old. Oh, Qigong is like 5,000 years old. It's very old is the point of that. And it is sort of the grandfather of all of the martial forms. So a lot of times when I'm telling people I am studying Qigong and they do that, like, what the heck is Qigong thing? <laughs> I will say something like, well, have you heard of Kung Fu? Or have you heard of Tai Chi? And they're like, yeah, I know what that is. And it's like, well, Qigong is the great grandfather of all of those forms. Qigong came first. Everything else came out of that. And um, as I'm speaking about this, I want to uh, clarify that I am still a student here, even though I've been studying it for a while now, probably, yeah, since tw like in earnest since 2015. Um, but I am by no means an authority. I'm just sharing what I have learned. Um, if there is somebody out there that is watching this that um, notices that I'm saying something incorrect, please take the time to correct me so that I'm not sharing bad information. And also just for my own knowledge, I would I don't want to have bad information. Um, but this is my understanding that Qigong is very old. It is the grandfather of all of the martial art forms. And um, it came down through a lineage of Taoism. Then it also was practiced by Shaolin monks. And um, yeah, a lot of martial artists will often do Qigong warmups. They just incorporate it into a lot of the things that they do. And the reason that I love it is having been both a dancer and um, someone who has studied, oh, thank God they're done doing that. Yay, silence. Um, studied yoga, when I found Qigong, it was like this beautiful blend of fluid flowing movement that feels very much like a dance, but also sort of the strength of yoga. And yet, and yet it goes beyond both of those forms. So, and, and yoga developed very much the same way that Qigong did. That's why, um, you know, there's like, crow pose and downward dog pose and um, there's crane and there's butterfly and there's, uh, you know, most of the yoga forms also have names for animals because most of these things are coming out of a lineage that's very, very old 
when they were studying animals and trying to commune with the animals and embody the energies of nature. Um, but Qigong goes so beyond anything I had ever experienced with yoga before. So it makes you feel very strong, but it also makes you feel very graceful. And it, it, it creates a lot of strength. For the longest time when I was younger, I had no interest in things like Tai Chi or Qigong because I would look at it from the outside and I'm like, yeah, it's like little old people doing flowing movements in a park and it doesn't look hard and it doesn't look like it's a workout and I could care less because back then that, you know, movement was very much like a utility thing. Like I'm getting a workout here <laughs> and also it better be fun. Oh, I'm offline. Let's see. It said I was offline, but now it looks like I'm back on. Okay, I don't know. We'll just see how this all turns out. Um, but then I tried Qigong, and I was like, oh my god, Like, not only is this really hard and I'm sweating, but it is doing something to my consciousness, and I'm feeling very vital after. I'm feeling very energized, and I yeah, I just felt really good. So, um... I think it's still going. Okay, yeah. So I fell in love with Qigong. Now, um, I've given you a little brief, like, okay, sort of really brief, like what Qigong is, but <sighs> essentially it is that connecting with nature and being in flow with nature. There's this concept of Wu Wei, and that means effortless effort. So for a Westerner, that is sort of kind of like going with the flow, but it's also not like checking out and it's like, yeah, I do whatever, man. No, there's like a responsibility there as well. So it is learning to be in harmony with nature and cultivating your own life force energy and, and having that be like a way of life. So it's not just getting up and doing movements in your yard every morning like I do. But it's also your diet, and it's the way you think about things, and it's the way that you interact with the world, and it's very meditative, yet moving, and I just love it. <laughs> um, Lindsay Way, who wrote The Valley Spirit, a female story of Taoist cultivation, I believe is the title. Um, I watched an interview with her a while ago, and she found her martial forms... Um, after coming from years of studying dance and when i was watching this interview with her she said the reason that she fell in love with the more martial forms was it's like utility so rather than just being ornamentation like dance mostly is um qigong and and forms like kung fu and things like that they have a very like applicable utility because this thing is so old there's all these movements that can be directly correlated to your heart energy or your liver energy. Um, so if you're having issues there, there are particular movements you can do to move that chi around. And um, while I was studying pranic healing, I, <laughs> I actually just felt more and more called to Qigong because um, pranic healing uses a lot of the same concepts of Qigong. In China, they call it qi, and in India, they call it prana, but it's the same concept of this life force energy, the energy that you breathe, the energy that you eat, the energy that you yourself emit, um, and how to not necessarily manipulate it, but how to work with it. Like, rather than forcing it to do things with or for you, you learn to do things with it. And then you work in conjunction with one another because you are chi and you are prana. And um, when people get sick, it has to do with a, like a conjunction of flow. So in um, India, they have the chakra systems. And in China, they have meridians. But it's the same concept of all these energy systems that run up and down through the body, down back around, and they emit all around you, and they bring energy in from your crown and down through your feet, and you're pulling in energy from the earth and from the air. And um, energetically, it is very real. And that's why I really liked um, my teacher, Nicola Free's approach of using Qigong with what he calls bioenergetic healing. 
So um, he's wedding some of these really ancient concepts from China with a very modern like approach that is easily digestible for Westerners. But it's like you are what you eat. Um, you are what you think. It's a holistic system. It is not like the Newtonian, I go to a doctor and they give me a pill and that fixes everything. Um, to do this, you have to be very committed, like in all things. And I love that because I find that when it is a full body, full mind, full spiritual experience, the health just comes naturally rather than being like, I am disempowered. I've given all my power away to a doctor who thinks that he knows my life better than me. And I'm just going to trust that this pill will fix everything. So, um, it, it is very like you take control of your own life and you decide your level of health and your level of mental wellness and your level of participation in the world through your cultivation. So I'm not saying that you should never go, like I actually, there's a lot of um, benefit to Western doctors, um, but I kind of go to them as like a last resort now. I almost always try to fix myself first with diet and thoughts and movement and then if that is still not working, then I see the Western doctor because they're a very like treat the illness system and I am working towards wellness. <laughs> so I want to go with what I can do to be well first. And if the illness is still there, then I go ask them what I should do. So I'm using both systems, but I prefer to have um, the empowerment of my own health first before I give all of my power away. And um, my teacher that I am studying with, Nick, I'm gonna reach down and grab this. He suggested, um, oh, he suggested a bunch of books that we should start reading his students. But he had us start reading this one. It's called Between Heaven and Earth, A Guide to Chinese Medicine. It's by um, a woman named Harriet Beanfield. Um, and Ephraim Korngold, <laughs> which is a fun name. And that helps explain a lot of these ideas um, in a way that's digestible for Westerners because it really is a very different mindset in the East versus the way that we do things here. And what the author of this book is trying to do is wed the two. Um, and I like that. I, ever since I was very young, I've always been of the opinion that where there is knowledge to be had, I want that. Like I'm not a very, I'm not a kind of person that's like, yep, I just follow this one lineage and that's it. Um, I'm kind of like, hey, where is their power? Like where is their usefulness and where is their utility? If this is a thing that works, I don't really care who came up with it. I want to, I want to use that if it makes my life better. It makes me a healthier person. So um, Qigong is very, very good for that. And um, the reason that I finally, like I said, decided to, after years of studying it and loving it and wanting to share it with others, dive into a teacher program is that there was a very direct need that was addressed like in my current position. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to volunteer because the universe has put this in front of me and I should offer up this because it's something that I want to do. And it's something that I think would be very useful for seniors because some of the Qigong movement is huge and big and dynamic and you sweat and you feel like you got a dang good workout and your legs hurt later. And other movements are so very small and so very subtle that even people who have very, very limited ability can do this and still get benefit from it. So um, if I'm teaching it in the future, will I go into all of these esoteric concepts of the Tao and Wu Wei and the shamanic origins of Qigong? Probably not, um, because a lot of people, they're not into that. They just want to come and do the movement and move on. Um, do they get the full benefit of the practice? No. <laughs> But they're still getting some, you know, um, it's kind of like, even if you don't really understand what you're doing, if you're like taking a vitamin, you're still going to get like some of the benefits from it, whether you understand why it works or not. Um, what I like about the Qigong approach is that it's like, no, the more you understand, the more you take control over your own learning and the more committed you are to it, the more benefit you get. So it really is kind of choose your own adventure. 
like how much you want to get out of this. And I, I like that too, because I really like uh, responsibility these days, <laughs> which is funny. When I was younger, I was very much like a freedom first kind of person. And um, as I get older, and all of my spiritual traditions that I follow and all of the disciplines that I follow um, will say that true freedom is found in discipline, self-discipline. And I think that's absolutely true because a lot of people who are like, I do whatever I want, man, freedom first, blah, like their lives are a great, great big old giant mess. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you're just not a good example. So why would I listen to anything that you have to say? Um, it's a very like fix your own house first kind of approach with Qigong. Like you take ownership of your own health and you get healthy and you be a good living example before you ever try to share anything with anyone. And that's again, part of the reason that I've waited so long to talk about it or to share it with anyone. Um, because I wanted to make sure that I myself was deeply committed that I had a good understanding of this thing and also that I am learning from a lineage of teachers which is also really really important in the East um, to come from a long tradition of teachers means that you are getting good knowledge you're not just getting some hack job you know charlatan crap um, which there's a lot of that out in the world these days so um, that's that uh, I recommend that book I can post a lot of my teachers that I learned with um, as like links in this video after. Mm, I can recommend some good books. And yeah, this whole thing is very absolutely like a holistic thing. It is not just movement, it's, it's breath work and visualization and diet and seasons. Like that's another thing I absolutely love about Qigong is there's a whole system to move in harmony with the planet and with the earth and with the seasons and with, you know, nature. So like for instance, this morning I did some earth forms because we're currently in the earth element of late summer and there's very specific movements that are good for this time of year and help put you in the right mindset for this time and then there's like very specific types of foods you should be eating this time of year um, because it ha helps aid the chi so like for instance in the summer when it's super hot and your body is working extra extra hard to keep everything cool you don't want to add like super heating foods into your body because now your organs are working twice as hard to keep you cooled down. Um, so there's this whole approach of like eating for the season and then the movements help cool down fire in the body, you know? So it's all about trying to keep everything in a really awesome harmonic balance. Um, in the winter, the movements are very soft and that is the element of water. And so you flow more with that very water heavy, slow germinating time of winter and spring is very like fun and active and, and you know, the bursting forth of new life. And so it really puts you in the right frame of mind to move with nature instead of just trying to like hack at it, you know, <laughs> like when you get in the right mindset for winter, having done some of these practices and then you go out and it's like, well, I have to shovel snow now. It's like, well, you know, I'm, this is, this is a thing. I, I don't expect the universe to like constantly just make everything the way that I want it to be to perform my human duties. <laughs> like there needs to be adjustments and, and I enjoy that. It makes me feel more like a, a creature that is moving with nature instead of against it. You know, I joke all the time that human beings are the only animals on the planet stupid enough not to modify our routines to account for what's going on in nature. <laughs> Everything else is like when it's raining, we go sit under some leaves and wait it out. And when it's snowing, we hibernate or, you know, we're just not exerting as much energy as usual because there's snow on the ground. But humans are the only ones stupid enough to think that, you know, we are above it all and we can force things to then do our will. <laughs> so um, I like it because it helps put me in the right frame of mind for the time of the year. Um, that was another really interesting thing in that book that I just showed you guys too, um, the Between Heaven and Earth one. 
um, he talked about how this was even like a thing that Europeans did too. Like we were very in harmony with nature pre-Christian days and even after Christianity we still were because everything was viewed, everything in the universe was viewed as like the creation of God and therefore worthy of respect and that you move with it and you don't dishonor it because it's God's creation, right? Um, you know, indigenous cultures have this whole thing with honoring nature and honoring the animals who sacrifice their lives so that we may live. It wasn't until the Age of Enlightenment uh, in Europe, which was we're like, like 15th, 16th century, that this divorce of man and nature happened. And I think, like in a lot of ways, it's been beneficial for mankind, and in a lot of other ways, it's been absolutely detrimental to our psyche and our spiritual sensibilities. Um, because we are all part of this cycle, and it is deserving of our respect and our admiration like we're not separate from nature we're part of nature but we like pretend like that's not a thing and that separation from source has really harmed us i think in a lot of ways and allowed us to do really terrible things to other people let alone other creatures on this planet so that was my preachy preachy moment but <laughs> so um qigong really is useful in helping me reconnect to source and reconnect to the earth and reconnect to all of these energies. Um, in Europe, what they're referring to as chi in China or prana in India, we had a word called spiritu, which is the root of spirit, which means the breath. Um, so it is also that energy that animates life. Um, there used to be a concept that when did the spirit enter the body when the baby takes its first breath of air. You know, we have a lot of other um, understandings of what's going on with life forming now, but it, it used to be like until they take that first breath, that is when the animating life force enters the body, and now they are connected to this great energizing force that, that animates all things. Um, so I really like that. So that's, you know, kind of a brief, like, what is Qigong? Where did it come from? How old is it? What does it do? Why do I love it? Um, and so I'm really looking forward to this next step in my learning. Um, I've loved movement my entire life. I've had a horrific relationship with my body and I've had a really wonderful relationship with my body. And as I get older, the relationship of joy and wonder and, and viewing my body as such a wonderful vehicle to move through this life with has increased. When I was younger, it was not that way. <laughs> and um, I've had to go through a lot of, a lot of learning um, to get to a healthy place with my body and with my psyche and with my place in the universe. Um, so this next leg of the journey, I'm really excited to do. Um, another reason that I really was like, I need to double down on Qigong was that I was invited to go learn, um, pranic healing from my dear friend, Cindy, um, who has also been someone that's worked on me for years and years and years when I need some help. Um, and so she was like, do you want to come and learn my tradition? And I was like, yes, I do. And I really, really loved it. But the whole time I was learning it, I kept thinking, you know, this really just makes me want to learn more Qigong. <laughs> because um, pranic healing is very, it's hands off. Like everything is around the aura of the body, which that has merit too. And everything that I learned about um, all of the energy centers with pranic healing is just going to help me in learning all the meridians in Qigong. But I am a very like hands on kind of person. Like I want to get in there and poke things and move stuff around. And <laughs> that is just my natural inclination. Um, one of the weird things about Qigong when I'm trying to teach it to other people is there is a lot of touching your own body and moving things yourself. Because one of your greatest healing um, devices that you have access to is just your own hands. Like, you can move your own energy around, but you've got to get in there and, like, dig into it and get it moving around. And I love that. But I've noticed it's really kind of, like, off-putting to some people. I remember one time I was trying to teach a little bit of these Qigong concepts. 
when I was out teaching at the North Ogden Yoga Studio, and I was doing this whole thing where it's like, hey, you gotta pat your shoulder, and you pat up underneath your armpits, and like, there's even movements where you get up in your groins, and it's just like to kind of break up any stagnant energy in your body so that you can move it around properly, right? And I love it. I think it's great. It's like a self-massage. But some people were really weirded out by that and did not like it. So um, that's a thing that like I would probably save now for more committed students who really just want to learn Qigong and not just come in and get some movement in um, because it is really weird to some people. But I love like the very hands-on touching approach. Um, when I was a teenager, heck, even younger than that, I think I was like, 12 or something my mom and my grandma used to pay me all the time to massage them because <laughs> it was just very intuitive to me to like put my hands on people's bodies and like m rub the muscle and get the ache and the knot out um and I wanted actually to go into massage therapy school when I was graduating from high school but my father who had like worked very hard in a steel mill his entire life to put me through college didn't really like that idea and I was like well I guess I should go to college <laughs> so I always kind of regretted not going into massage therapy school and who knows I'm not dead yet I might do this thing eventually but I really am excited about Qigong because it is very hands-on so when I was learning a lot of the um, pranic healing stuff I was loving it but I was like this is not me like I want to touch things like and I don't necessarily want to touch other people but I want to learn teach them how they can fix themselves that way um, and move their own energy around and, and just empower them to um, be in control of their own healing and I'm really excited about that um, if I were going to teach in a senior center I would probably just teach very like easy flowing movements just to get them started a lot of this stuff can be done in a chair like you don't need to be able to stand just being able to make that connection of moving things around with your breath is where I would start first because that's like huge and then you can add in the visualization piece so for me a lot of the time when I'm like out here doing this in my yard in the morning um, so you match the movement with your breath and then there's a visualization piece so like for instance today I was doing um, a movement where you reach to the side and imagine that you're putting your hands around the moon right and then as you come down it's like you're skimming your hands over the surface of water and you imagine that as the reflection of the moon in a pond right and then you come back up and you reach for the moon on the other side and then you sit and do that over and over and um, that's another thing that's a little bit different with Qigong versus yoga is it's very like repetitive movement because the repetitive loop helps create an energy pattern in the body. So that's one thing that's very different um, from yoga. And again, I don't know if it is that it's really, really different from yoga or if we're just not performing the asanas properly here in the West from how they were intended to be done. But a lot of times with yoga, it's like, okay, plant into a movement okay stay there now hold the asana okay now move into this other one okay now next pose you know and this is no we're gonna sit and do this moving the moon around thing for a while right <laughs> Be, and i love it because at first there's this part of like okay i've just gotta like physically figure out what the heck i'm doing and get that down then once that's set and in there it's like okay now i can match my breath to doing this movement okay that's in there okay now I can add the visualization piece of like this is the moon I'm moving the moon across the water and when you can get all three of these things going at the same time it's so powerful but it takes a while like it is not something that just happens immediately like it takes some time because the movements in themselves are kind of challenging at first um, but yeah, like for seniors, I might do something really gentle, like just the fountain. Just moving that energy around, getting a little breath work. And after you do these things for a little bit of time, they start to become easier. And then it's like, okay, now we're going to do a new one. <laughs> so that's kind of my loose plan. If I ever get to a point where I'm teaching this, I'm still not 100% sure that I am going to teach it. 
Um, but I am excited to go through this lineage of training so that I can have more knowledge just for myself. And then if I choose to share it with others, then I have that tool. And, and I would like to share this with other people who are interested because it's, it is hands down the most powerful, um, energetic movement I've ever come across with the exception of the Orisha movements that I learned with Samba Fogo. And again, those movements are all about connecting to nature and embodying nature and so very powerful. But those movements in particular are for like athletes, you know, <laughs> like I had been dancing for quite a while before I ever came across that. And when I tried it, I was like, this is kicking my trash. Like I am so tired at first and then you get the stamina and then you can do it. But it's definitely not something I would share with just anyone because it's hard. Whereas Qigong is, there's that effortless effort thing going on. There's that concept of Wu Wei where you have to kind of relax into the movement and surrender. Um, which I think is a really big thing we need to work on here in the West. Like we don't, we don't understand surrender in the West at all. Like everything is like, go out, kill your goals, slay this thing. Like, you know, be aggressive all the time. And <laughs> that's exhausting. Um, so this is like learning how to be strong in surrender, which is weird. Like they seem contradictory, but once you kind of get this, 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 this concept down of effortless effort, it's amazing. <laughs> and I wish that in itself, if I could share anything with everybody, it would be that. Um, because it's so very helpful and just sort of kind of like moving with obstacles instead of like hating them and struggling against them. Um, here's this tree behind me. We call this our grandfather tree because it's really old. It's probably over a hundred years old. And um, there's a lot of times when we're working with wood energy in Qigong where it's like, I want you to imagine that you're rooting down with a tree. And I always think of this tree. That's why I wanted to come out here and be with this tree. Um, but one of my teachers, Mimi, she's always like, there's a lot that we can learn from trees as human beings, because when they meet an obstacle, they just grow around it. You know, they're like, okay, this is a thing, but I'm going to like grow around it. And it does take some time, but they do it. Trees are amazing that way. And same thing with water. Um, so yeah. So anyway, I've been talking for a while. Um, Facebook Live is weird. I can't tell if anybody's been leaving comments or interacting with me at all until I turn this off. Um, but if you have been interacting with me, I will respond to your comments or questions. Um, if you come across this video later and you have comments or questions, feel free to leave me a comment or question and I'll get to it. And then um, I will link up some of those resources that I was telling you about. Um, with this video and thanks for listening to me ramble about my passion for Qigong. I hope everybody else is having a great Sunday and enjoying this beautiful weather. Uh, I will talk to you all again soon. Bye-bye.